Thank you very much. That was excellent. Yes! We are in business. OK, I'm about to get on the sea cat, which will get me to France in 60 minutes. But before I get on, I have one concern about... Yes, hello, Jeremy. I've got the gendarmes just all over me. I think he's been licked by the by the rosses. Oh, uh, have they stopped you? They just keep coming alongside and they're just going quicker, quicker. Rubbish, you're making it up. This is the great thing about driving, is the police come along in France and then just want you to go quicker. How's that, Mr. Gendarme? Minus 40. Minus 40. Do you know, you're all wrong. Uncle? It's not. Sub-zero. We have had to build a new <laughs> section for it. The DB9 section. <laughs> and it's a fridge. <laughs> and there it is. We have successfully driven through Nebworth. I don't think anybody noticed. It may be top bling, but Fab One is largely useless on anything but wide, straight roads. So if you were Lady Penelope, there's only one place in Britain you could live. Oh, dear. So, I ask you, is I bling? You want a wee. But I can't stop because that would mean starting the engine again and starting an engine uses a load of fuel. So, New York taxi driver trick, and you're not allowed to watch. Is that a pigeon look and a Ford sport cam. <laughs> <laughs> The question is, which is fastest in a race, the car or this pigeon? Finally, Pigeon Central. But is it too late? Have we lost? I'm afraid so. Can I see the bird that beat us, please? Uh, there's 14 in there. 14? That really is rubbing it in. The pigeon was in its 11, 48 and 40. It was a massacre. Even without my mistake, the pigeons would still have won by half an hour. Right, we've lost. Let's go home. Holy mother of God, I can see the garage. Talking yards now, yards to go. This is the garage I filled up at yesterday morning. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how we do that. This car has gone from London to Edinburgh and back again with a V8 engine on one tank of fuel. I am absolutely lost for words. That is one astonishing car. It's time for Top Gear to answer a big question. It's been on the lips of the nation for years, and it's this. Can a nun drive a monster truck? This is Sister Wendy. She's a nun, and she drives a Vauxhall Nova. Like all nuns, she does nice things. Sister Wendy serves food to old people. Do you want some ice cream? She belongs to the Order of Grace and Compassion of Benedictine nuns. They're hardcore nuns who pray five times a day. This is it. She's up. She's up. She's going off and she stopped. She's moving. She's falling off the car. She's falling over. She has done it. And that was a nun in a monster truck. was the coolest thing right? I have Isn't ever right? seen. Are you all right? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Does it, you can get... Well, you won't get in because you're... They built that car. Jesus is here! <laughs> <laughs> and we never knew! Wow! <laughs> Who have we booked as the guest this 
this week? Maybe he's not supposed to be on yet. Is he the guest? <laughs> that would be something, wouldn't it? We'd get some viewers. How did, you do, how did you do on the track, Jesus? At least I'm not too tall for my hair, eh, Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> And Jesus, and Jesus, Jesus, is <laughs> Jesus has just said that he's not too tall for his hair. <laughs> Shut up now, Jesus. <laughs> C90s, what I've got in mind, okay? That's a kind of. They. You've been standing on a box. It's a big car. Oh, really? It's the car. And we're starting with speed cameras. Uh, you see, the government uh, denies that they're there to make money. <laughs> Here are the cars we bought. There's Richard's Rover GTI, James's Audi 80, and my V6 Volvo GLE. And here's the first test. Our researchers worked out how much fuel was used on the Manchester run. 30 mpg was the target for every mile to the gallon. Over that, you get a point. For every mpg under it, you lose a point. Right, I have the results of the economy run. The Volvo, 20 miles to the gallon, giving Jeremy a score of minus 10. The Rover, 23 miles to the gallon, giving Richard a score of minus 7. And the Audi, a remarkable 35 miles to the gallon, giving me 5 points. Yeah. If, for example, you dent the bodywork on the new Golf, you can now simply change the outer skin rather than incur the cost of getting a whole new panel. Like the game, it bores me to tell you, but the Golf is the one you'll want to buy. Good shot. It's not exciting, but VW have had so long now to work on it. Can anybody think of a car currently available that's uglier than an S-Type Jag? But multipler, no, you see, no, no multipler's fine. It's changed. Well, who said thank you? Have you got one? There's someone, you own a multipler. <laughs> <laughs> the owner of a multipler. Oh, no. <laughs> He's here. Um, they've announced in Florida that it's now legal, that's legal for bikers to ride their motorcycles without a crash helmet, as long as they can prove they've got $10,000 worth of health insurance. Well, that's just stupid. Apart from anything else, what's the point of insuring Americans' head when there's nothing in it? <laughs> so here we are, all three cars together on this enormous playground. And now we must decide which is best. All we learn to begin with is just how hard it is to drive a powerful rear-drive car on wet sand. They just go sideways, constantly. You know the designer of the 5 Series died after he'd finished it? He did. This one died while he was doing it. <laughs> Only half of it styled. Look, I'll show you. He's cutting along here, perfectly well, nice straight line. Got to here and lost the will to live. Look. <laughs> and then someone else came along and just sort of plonked a big duvet on the back. This is me. Roger, thank you. UK 991, Reckling Road off Merton Road. Reckling Road? Okay, here we go. Mini cabin. Unlike Hammond's minicab, my Renault actually has sat-nav, but I'd be cheating if I used it because A, it's a £1,000 option and no minicab would have it, and B, it would mean I actually knew where I was going. So instead I've got plastic stick-on compass and, of course, the trusty old A to Z, which is now more like a B to Z. I've got the heaters on, really quite incredibly furnace warm left. Then right. I think that's important. Cack! Right the other way. Besides powerful heaters, the C Max also has a cracking stereo. Good enough to find that station that only seems available in minicabs. There we go. There we go. Oh yeah. 
Right, this should be it on the left. It is, I've got to say, a bit gloomy in here, but there's loads of space. If I got a call from Control Run as saying the Pope needed picking up from a nightclub, no worries. Straight in here. Mary? In truth, I'm probably not the one to test for headroom, but my first customer, that was a different matter. I'm your cab. Now, you're really tall. I am. So? Do you want to know how tall I am? For stats? <laughs> yeah, how tall are you? Six, five and a half. Got a slightly bad feeling about this one. And have uh, you got room? What I have a like... problem with headroom in a lot of these cars, and look, you know, there's a little bit of headroom problem here, but, you know. It's not bad. Are there any perks to being a pathologist? When I did find my first fare, she happened to be a fencer with a bag of nice long swords. An ideal test then for the scenic. Would its boot swallow them up? No. no. Cheers, Mark. Nice to meet you. My first fare. <laughs> Bet you James carries their bags to the car. <laughs> Um, a little bit, yes. Yeah, he does that for people anyway, to be honest. Then he'll open the door. He's more his chauffeur than your mini cover. The swords, sadly, had to go in the front. Right, sorry about all that. I'm a bit new to this. I'm not a real mini cover. I'm on TV, really. This isn't my real job. Replingham Road, OK. Thank you. It's a Renault Scenic. With very versatile seating, you'll find that if you grab hold of the little lever, you can slide it backwards and forwards. This? No, 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 that's the front armrest. Rippling him. I was just there! I've just turned round! Oh, cool. cool. Is that cool? Yeah. yeah. I'm just slightly you worried. You can turn it into a big bed or something. Oh, God. What if they're all drunk? So, are you being recorded so you can test if you would be good as a presenter? No, no, I am a presenter. Oh, Do you mind? Sorry, sorry. This isn't you... my real job. You... Don't tread on me brain yet, or I'll be stuck. At last, a car full of people, including a couple of burly rugby player types. Um, oh, right. where, where are we going? Uh, okay. Ones with common. common. Um, straight it's ahead. Cool, oh, thank you. <laughs> We're testing uh, this yeah. car as a mini car. It's quite good. It's quite. It only takes four. It's got loads of gadgets on that um, steering wheel. Oh. We've got a uh, stereo stuff. They, is that for each seat? Those. Um... Yeah, that's yeah. for him. Yeah, it might have to burn it burn off. Yeah, because I left his seat on five. five. You oh, see, I, I thought that might. It was the wrong thing to do. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so they were impressed by the seat heater, but as for the space. Well, it was two in the back, one in the front, just like in an ordinary hatchback. I did get an interesting tip, though. Some uh, Colston Bassett Stilton. That's very nice, thank you. Some Cashel Blue. Um, now, the essence is, when it started a few years ago, they had a five-star safety rating, which they thought would be unachievable. Yeah, no car would ever do that. Good. Yeah. Renault Laguna was the first to do it. Yeah. This year's results. Five stars has been awarded to the Vauxhall Astra, the Renault Megane Convertible, the Volkswagen Golf, the Peugeot 407, the Saab Convertible, Volvo S40 mm -hmm. and the Toyota Corolla Verso. They've all got five stars. Kind of nearly all cars, really. It's getting a bit like those A-level results every year, isn't it? When all yeah. of a sudden everybody gets it. Have I've you ever some. been to school? Yeah, have 30 A-levels. Yeah. I got 10 this year. I'm... Absolutely. So what they've started concentrating on now is pedestrian rating, is how safe you are if you get hit by one of these things. In essence, and I'm choosing the top two here, if you find yourself in the middle of a dual carriageway and you, there are two cars coming towards you, a Honda Jazz and a Vauxhall Astra, leap in front of the Jazz. Yeah. <laughs> this would be my suggestion because you're going to be OK. In front of the Astra, Add it. it's kind of curtains, yeah. really. That's useful advice. Yeah, it is, except for one thing. I don't really care about pedestrians. It's not going to be a popular view, that one, Jeremy. It's not, but let me explain. You see, the thing is, the Vauxhall Astra, OK, picking, sticking with these two cars, five star for people in the front, four for people in the back, one star for pedestrian rating, OK? So you think, OK, Honda Jazz, slightly less safe in the front, slightly less safe in the back, much better for pedestrians. Now, look, in order of people I care about, my children are number one. Yeah. I'm number two, me. Yeah. Number three... James coming out of the pub a bit drunk. 
Yeah. You're gonna run him down. I, I see where you're going. Exactly. Here we are, the cameras poised and ready, and here comes a young talker. He's in a stolen car, he has no insurance, and he's so off his face on drugs, he's actually incapable of exceeding the speed limit. So he's completely safe. Look, no flash at all there. Now, who's this? Why, it's Osama bin Laden, the world's most wanted man. He hasn't been apprehended yet because he's realised that if he sticks to 30 miles an hour, he'll be quite safe. Yes, there we are. All that police enforcement technology and it can't catch the world's best-known terrorist. Ah, but look what we have here. It's a little old lady on her way to the village fate with some cakes. Whoops, she's inadvertently strayed up to 34 miles an hour and good, it's got her. What a maniac! Again. Right, do you remember our pickup truck? Yeah. Of course you remember our pickup truck. It's in the studio here somewhere. It's still running remarkably. What did we do to that? Everything. We Burnt set fire it. to it, drowned it, blew it up on the top of the building, all that sort of stuff. It still works at the end of it. Toyota have launched a new Toyota pickup truck and they've sort of named it after our experiment. They've called that the Toyota Hilux Invincible. What? They've really named it? So yeah, we they've named, really named the car? It. Sort of, yeah. They acknowledge the role of our TV programme in the naming of that car. That's brilliant news. That's fantastic. Perhaps this would catch on. Perhaps all cars could be named after what we think of them. <laughs> oh, yes. The Nissan 350 Noisy, for instance. The Porsche Cayenne Minga. Would yes, that would be a good name. How about the Rover City Rubbish? Yeah. I like City Rubbish. The BMW 5 Too Ugly. <laughs> yeah, I think this is a good idea, and I think this is going to catch on. Okay, the engines are at full power, and here comes the Mondeo. Now, can they blow this one and a half ton car off course from 50 yards away? Three, two, oh, blimey! There it goes! The Mondeo must have been blasted a good 50 feet, but we haven't finished yet. Well, that was a modern, streamlined aerodynamic car, so let's have another go now and see what happens when we let loose the Top Gear crosswind on something a little more, well, slab-sided. A Citroen 2CV. Big engine, lightweight hippie car. This should be fun. OK, here we go again. The engines are up to 58,000 pounds of thrust. The car is released. And three, two... Whoa, crikey! Yes, the 2CV really doesn't like crosswinds. You see, next time you're out, you think you might encounter crosswinds or have to drive behind a 747 at takeoff thrust, you're better off with a Mondeo than a 2CV. It's a service we provide this stuff, you know. Well, because I've got here the foreword by the Prime Minister, OK? He's written a one-and-a-half-page foreword. He mentions congestion once, and the economy once, and safety once, and then he goes, environmentally sustainable, realistic environmentally, environmentally, least polluting, greener, environment, carbon emissions, climate change, cleaner and greener. It's all to do with the environment. That's all it is. Which may yes. There's an interesting bit here under the uh, interurban coaches, whatever they are, which talks about the successful introduction of a dedicated bus lane on the M4. We've which got footage of this, successful bus lane. Can we run that? Let's have a look how... Su there it That's is. successful. <laughs> Oh my God, there is one! There's well, one there's coming on. along. It's OK, there's, there's no one on it apart from the driver, so there we are. This
Well done. That was fantastic. <laughs> so, right. Good effort, my son. Well done, Teddy. Well done, Tim. Now, we haven't been here for quite a while, so first thing, a little bit of housekeeping to be done, OK? And straight away, up here, the Mini. Oh, yeah. Now, it's been up there, Sub-Zero, for ages. To be honest, time and too many estate agents, I think, have kind of eroded the coolness. And I think it might... It's we not even cool anymore, this. it's down here. Yeah. Yeah. All agreed, we all agreed the Mini is now uncool. Yes, absolutely. It's, absolutely. Good. So, the Mini Cabriolet... You see, the thing is, if you've got a Mini right now, you need to keep a low profile. You're driving around in dire straits. This, um, I'm sorry, is even less cool. No, you're wrong, 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 wrong. Well, no, that's perfectly no, correct. Right. I'm... This is a serious, not seriously cool, but this is a cool car. You are joking! Let <laughs> the people speak. The people are speak, OK? Yes, we're speaking. It's cute, it's quirky, and it's a good girl's car, too. Thanks a lot. That'll do. Wrong. Listen, find anybody we else. Have a new, we have a new rule on the cool wall. Yes. James May, who eats pastry, drinks yes. brown beer, and yes. thinks a curry is exotic, yeah. thinks this is uncool. He's always wrong on matters of such <laughs> things. <laughs> there, it's cool, and that's a thank you. I don't keep him boo. That's... Jeremy Clarkson, that is going to come back and haunt you. It's a cool car. It's so cool. It's a convertible <laughs> Mini. You can't get cooler. <laughs> You're wrong. People are going to laugh at you for centuries. Here is the Fiat Barchetta. Now, this... It's going to fall apart. Every time you drive it, you're going to be stopping to get out and pick up bits that have dropped off. <laughs> but that's why it's cool. It's got a kind of shabby charm. Work with me on this. It has. <laughs> There's a lot of blank looks. It has. It's a brave choice. It's a cool car. <laughs> well, who said it's still a Fiat? <laughs> What's it's... wrong with a Fiat? They're not good. They're, They're French. <laughs> This audience from gardening program, mate. That's what. Do you it know is. what Fiat stands for? The I in it, Italia. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know? I'm going to suggest we've got a few more to get through here, mate. I'd keep my mouth shut. Yeah. Now for the moment of truth. To you. Oh. To you. <laughs> my hands are slipping on the leatherette. Hang on. Ooh. We might have to tip the cushions a bit. Go on, give it a push. Yes, That's fantastic. Oh. Hang on. No. Is that at the end? Yeah. For Pete's sake. That would have gone in a Jag or an Audi. Look, just look. Just forget it, mate. It isn't going to fit, right? So then, James, what did you buy to brighten up our studio? Are you ready? Yes, go on. How about that? Wow! <laughs> that's, fan that's fantastic! It's a... I was I'm thinking of you when I, I when bought it. I could have a different it. hairstyle every... Actually, I've had a better idea. Where's that hair bloke earlier on? Where it... Is hair! Come here! Right? Come on, come on! <laughs> quick, come through! Come on, come on! Make way, make way, make way! Quick, quick, quick! Come on, get yourself in there, mate. Look, this is it. <laughs> See? Oh, well, we look can... at that! We'll put that down there. Um, <laughs> sorry, mate. Do you, mind, this... do you mind if we just discuss the... What we've got here is a United Nations drag race, with Britain being represented by a 350 brake horsepower TVR 350, Japan by the Honda NSX, and from Germany, a 911. All with roughly the same power, all purpose built for the job. OK, bit of spin off the line. Porsche's gone backwards, the TBR is absolutely steaming ahead. Neck and neck with the NSX, the Japanese. Oh, this looks poor. A lowly third for the Corvette. The Brits! Oh dear, they win. So, is this American any good at anything? Well, actually, yes. The head of display, that's cool. That's a very good thing, it shows your revs and speed and all sorts, which is useful. And here's something else interesting. A G-meter. Now, why would an American car need a G-meter?
The problem with the Olympic Games, though, is there's no cars in them, and that's no good at all. So we thought we'd have some games of our own. Obviously, if you're going to have an international games event with cars, certain disciplines are out of the window. Fencing is tricky. Table tennis is impossible. Swimming, of course, fraught with technical difficulties. And the marathon, well, that's just too easy. So after much thought, we've settled on this, the long jump. So let's meet the car competitors. From Great Britain, the Austin Maestro. From France, the Citroen 2CV. From the United States of America, the AMC Pacer. Representing the Czech Republic is the Skoda favorite. And here for Russia, the Lada Riva. Each competitor car will start from here. Now, they all have exactly the same run-up, so this should be a good test of acceleration. And it should reveal a lot about power-to-weight ratios. So they start from here, they hammer down there, sprinting towards that point in the distance from where they launch into the pit for their attempt at the long jump. So let the games begin. Bring forward the first competitor from the Czech Republic, the favourite, the Skoda favourite, in fact. At 11 years, it's the youngest competitor here today. So is its 1.3-litre engine up to the job? Oh, that's monstrous! The length of the jump will be measured from where the back wheels land, and the Skoda has opened the games with a very respectable 9.29 metres. Quite a target for the others to go for. The AMC Pacer is the oldest and heaviest competitor, but it's also the most powerful, with nearly four litres of engine. Oh dear. Despite that big engine, its acceleration doesn't look good. What a splash! That nearly emptied the sandpit. The jump, though, is pathetic. So the AMC struggles to cover 6.2 metres. Next up, from France, the 2CV. With 600 cc's under the bonnet, it's the smallest capacity car, but also the lightest. So has it got the power to weight ratio just right? Let's see. Oh, that looks good. And where's he going now? Well, I don't know, the French looking like they were making a bid to go straight back home there. In the end, the plucky 2CV manages 7.78 meters for France. From Russia, the Lada Riva Estate 1.5. Plenty of room in the back of this car, of course, but has it got the grunt to take it over the line? Lord, it's flying! The Russian there just throwing caution to the wind. I mean, clearly that was determination. And that effort's paid off with a massive jump of 10.85 metres for the Russian. The Austin Maestro 1.3 now, it's always been underpowered. It's gonna be the underdog. But there's always hope. Who knows what it might pull out of the hat? Come on, Great Britain. Ooh, that looks good. And a nice exit, too. And the result for Great Britain, 8.34 metres. So here we have the results. In fifth place, America and the AMC Pacer. In fourth, France, the 2CV. In third place, it's the Brit, the Austin Maestro. In second, the Czech Republic. But in first place, with a massive 10.85 metres, from Russia, the Lada Riva Estate, a true champion.